Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, and you will get access to weekly Q&As and the exclusive Coffee Cast podcast, where we'll answer those questions. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. A member just like Mish did. Thank you very much, Chad of Arabia, who blesses us by the grace of God with his many goats and harem of other exotic animals, all bowing to his will. But jokes aside, thanks, Mish. Glad to see you again. Didn't notify me that I unsubbed. Yeah, YouTube tends to do that. I have the same thing with Gumroad and people with their credit cards. It is... Every now and then, payment methods is just an absolute, well, crud show. <laughs> JD, I hope we're all giving Russia a stern talking to. Yes, Russia, don't do that. Bad Russia. Ethan, have you practiced your Russian yet? Da. Nostrovia. People in the U.S. need to calm down. Biden is too chicken to take us into a war. Well, I tend to agree with that. By the way, the coffee machine is in the background. If it is too much of a nuisance for you, let me know. I will just... I'll do it like this. This is too close. So, um, in light of all events, I wanted to talk about something. About a post I found from our dear Uncle Vajja. Uh, where is it? Yeah, the moment of panic is the moment of opportunity. It's not a long post, but I do want to read it for you. And uh, as we did last time, I'll give my thoughts about it midway through, things like that. But in all honesty, the current world situation has no influence whatsoever over your daily life other than maybe uh, a couple of cost issues things like that other than that not much i mean yeah let's be honest here you can still go outside and things like that uh market opportunity i mean the market has been crashing but i remember this from the co from the uh from the what a, the coof thing markets are crashing people were panicking and a lot of people i know were buying buying and buying and they're still in profit even now. So, yeah. Let's get into it, shall we? Mm, share screen. And I'm I'm not undermining the situation here. It's absolutely horrible for the people who live there and things like that. But I'm sorry. I don't know you. I've got myself to look after. So, yeah. Uh, where are you? Uh, the archive. Outcome independence. The moment of panic. There we go. Apologies, by the way. The moment of panic is the moment of opportunity by Vasile Zaitsev. The moment of panic. The moment of panic arrives when you get fired or laid off, or when your long term relationship dumps you and walks out the door with 100% of your cooch supply. The moment of panic is when you think you're effed. Except you're not effed. Read on, younglings. The moment of panic is really the moment of opportunity. Like I just said, like the markets are completely down. This is not financial advice, by the way, but I see this as a buying opportunity to, do to just dollar cost average or euro cost average into the bottom. And we'll see where we'll head up. We'll see where we'll end. Maybe everything goes to zero, but you know what? If so, YOLO, I tried. Uh, the moment of panic, it, panic is really the moment of opportunity. The moment of panic is really your chance to reinvent yourself. Years ago, I was five years into my first real job in corporate land. Um, by the way, if you want to wanna find Uncle Vass's magnum opus, you're going to need to read Corporate Land, which I haven't yet. Sub Horden, good to see you too, sir. Uh, by the way, I left a link to this post here in the chat. Chico's here. Hello, sir. How's your back? How's your Gundam? How's that thing? That thing is amazing. Moving on. I had outgrown the position. 
the company and the city I was living in. Yeah, I was living in. We were getting acquired by another large firm, and usually that means 20% of the workforce is being reduced because those synergies and savings have to come from somewhere. So zeroed out is not just a relationship. It happens with losing your job, um, especially after years of investment in it as well. So for you guys out there who may have been fired or switching jobs, looking for a job, this is a post for you. So I volunteered to get cut as part of the RIF, reduction in force for your noobs. It's corporate speak for getting laid off. Why? Well, first, based on time and grade, and also because they offered an additional severance for people who they didn't want to leave before sale and thus decreased the value of the company, which thankfully included me. I would be getting nearly two years of salary if I, if I was there on the last day. I mean, Uncle Vaz is a pretty good Machiavellian, in all honesty. He's very tactical. So I volunteered, even though you weren't actually permitted to volunteer, I did anyway. It is always better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. Ryan taught me this. The second best coach in the manosphere as of yesterday. I offered to flip the lights off on the last day. Why? In addition to the money, I did not have a wife or kids or a mortgage. My lease was month to month, and I knew I could simply go reinvent myself somewhere else, somewhere better. And that's what I did. I need to keep an eye on something, by the way, because Boomer Clary might show up. Not sure. There we go. Uh, where is it? Uh, volunteer anyway. Where was I? So I volunteered uh, somewhere better. That's what I did. <clears throat> there we go. As you progress as a man, you will outgrow jobs and you will outgrow relationships. Yes, that is true. Uh, Every time you have a new experience, you learn something of yourself, etc. The people you hang out with, the people you associate with, they either grow with you or they, well, you outgrow them. We have a tendency to stay in comfortable situations. I'm a bit guilty of that myself in my current gig, but I also reshaped it in ways that would not usually be permitted. But, well, I'm special until I'm not. And that time is arriving. Now, that's the thing with corporate jobs these days, where it's like a lot of people aren't allowed to work from home anymore. At least in the Netherlands, they have been uh, revoking the whole work from home thing. And people are actually going back. Like, And I'm like, why are you doing that? You have proved you can work from home. Why Why are you going back? Well, otherwise, I don't know. And my job's on the line. I'm like, Jesus, is your job really on the line? Or are you that afraid? Like, your only source of cooch and your only source of income is what creates this dependency. Where it's like, well, that's my only source of substance. Where it's like, mm, that creates such an... You have become... So outcome independent, where it's like, work on your income streams, man. Please do. Captain Kapow, never stop working from home. Cheers, lad. Proud of you. The light gets hit or we get the hose again. Yes. Yes, you do. 98% of my work is remote-based. Blessed. Be absolutely blessed. With office work, oh, my God. If you can do it from home, just do it. Now, as you know, like I've got the, the coaching thing, I've got the narrations, I've got the live streams, things like that. All of that I can do from home. But I have that side gig at the floor factory, which is only two days a week. I'm actually glad I can get out of the house and do something. But that's mostly manual labor. So that's nice to have. But with office work, by God, am I, if I ever get office work again, 
I will not take it if they won't allow me to work from home. I am damn sure about that. How's this? This is a nice uh, layout. The importance of optionality. The difference between me and you, younglings, for now, is that I don't panic. Someday, you will not either, provided that you can play your cards right. This is why we tell you to get on your grind and stay on your grind. This is why you should develop multiple streams of income and then thicken the streams. What did I just say? I had a bit of a scuffle with Clary about that. Not really a scuffle, but more of a, well, I got horribly rejected. Let's be honest here. But <laughs> a man who has options is a man who cannot be effed with. Is he wrong? Everybody go to, oh, here we go. Everybody go to, <laughs> I don't remember how the song goes. But everybody go hotel, motel, holiday in, you see. If your girl starts acting up, then you take her friend. Rapper's Delight by Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> and that's the same thing with work. Did I guy did I guy uh, did I ever tell you guys what happened when my holiday got rejected three times yeah, three times in a row? At the end, I was just like, well, then I'm just taking the holiday. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I'm not coming back. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> You're treating me like shit, so I'm leaving. But but we're busy this season. Well, that sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. I had six months of expenses covered. Because minimalism, whoop. So they rejected my holiday. I'm like, okay, then I'm going to reject you. How's that? I really need to leave the house for the gym if I'm working from home. I get that. I get that. That's the only downside I have with the home gym. I miss working out with somebody. My former training partner was the best when it came to that. So I agree with you on that, John. It's also why I'm a fan of dating plating multiple women. So no one woman is going to decide if you're going to F tonight. If a girl leaves, she's not walking out the door with 100% of your cooch supply. And that gives you optionality and therefore clarity. He's right about that. I've dated multiple women at a time. And if one gets out of line, it is so easy when you've got two others to just say bye or not respond at all. Because you just start texting the other one. Well, she's nice. <laughs> I mean, it's horrible, but it's true. It's not even horrible. I mean, sorry, but let's be honest here. How many girls have like 20 guys they can text these days? And that's okay, but realize the game we're in. Now, if you have one girl who's acting just not as you want her to act, just start texting the other one. I mean, that's what girls do these days with us. I mean, as you get older and you get more uh, game savvy, sort of say, you just start doing that. It's like, bye. Same with employees. Employers, I'm sorry. Uh, it makes you the chooser. It keeps the balance of power shifted in your favor. At the end of the day, the more options you have in life and with girls, the less you can be effed with. You won't have to put up with your boss's shit if you can cross the street and get another job for the same or better pay. Told you. Um, or have six months of expenses covered because there is a job out there. You won't have to put up with one girl's awful nagging if you can go find another one who fellatios as good or as willing to learn and who isn't a complete pain in the ass. Lack of abundance or at least scarcity mentality is a great way to make yourself crazy and desperate for poon. Turns women off. No poon beggar ever poon begged his way out of a dry spell. It's miserable. And in its most extreme form, it's how guys wind up as the back half of a murder-suicide. Oh, well, hello. So build yourself into the prize. Oh, he means the, uh, uh, what's his name? The kid in the van. Oh, horrible, horrible situation. So build yourself into the prize and work that abundance mentality. So when things get asymmetric, don't panic. Slow down. Take stock of where you are and plan your path toward a better future. 
The takeaways, don't panic. Change is an opportunity to reinvent yourself, develop multiple streams of income, and then thicken the stream. Further reading, corporate land. <laughs> Romantics of the red pill. Oh, my. Oh, my. Have I read this one? Here we go. Oh, yeah, I've read this one. We'll do this one for the other. Uh, we'll do this one for the other stream. We'll do this one for the other stream. So, yeah, that was the whole uh, don't panic situation. So what Vaz is actually just talking about is that when you've got your business in order, so to say, there's no need to panic. You can, it's not per se anti-fragility. It has become liquidity. Uh, the last law of the 48 laws of power is be fluid. Always be malleable, always be adaptable, and kind of goes through the whole book. This is why it contradicts itself, contradicts itself as well at multiple levels, because you can't apply everything in different situations. That is why you need to learn to be adjustable, mostly, especially with jobs, and especially these days. And I believe it's a bit worse in the States than it is here. But what I from what I remember from my call center jobs, it is you are nothing but a number and they will treat you like S. They will treat you like shit if you let them. The trick is not to let them. Because, again, asking for forgiveness is better than asking for permission. And that is something I learned through the years of all my jobs, where it's like, <clears throat> if the end result is there, they maybe give you a stern talking at most, but nothing more than that. Mm. And even if they give you more than that, there's another job out there somewhere. There is. There's always something. The biggest problem I have seen is that people don't want to um, lower, quote-unquote, lower themselves to a certain job. Now, mind you, I have that floor factory side gig, two days a week. Some people would say, you work at a floor factory? It's like, first of all, I also have an online business. Second of all, I have a normal business where I train my clients here. Third, I have audiobook narrations. Fourth, I have a YouTube channel with 41, as of today, very cool members who, by the way, can answer the Q&A post as of uh, my this morning. So leave your questions there, please. And I have... What else do I have? The Personal training online. I believe I already said that. But that doesn't make me better than anybody who works in that floor factory. Um, most people I've seen out there with their college degrees and their high-paying job are still in, they're still in crushing debt. And I've seen it. I've seen it where it's like, really? Like, if you wonder why I live why I live, is because I've seen what's out there and it's all fake. At least mine is real. But no job is too low for anyone. No honesty. Then let's be fair, that, that floor factory earns pretty well. Not gonna lie, it earns pretty good. The only problem is it's not a social because... What I did like about office work and the call centers and things like that is that it's it's more of a social hierarchy going on around there with uh, intersexual dynamics as well. And I kind of like that. But it really is high school never ends. It really is high school never ends. And for a job, you need to like, can you handle that? And I couldn't always handle that because I was just so sick and tired of it. I'm like, just pay me. 
just pay me. And at a certain point, I was just like, you're not paying me enough for this. You are not paying me enough for this. I even told my um, floor manager that once. Everyone complains their job isn't social enough until they get a social job. I've had a social job. And in all honesty, I like my online business a lot. I really do. And I like my uh I like my closed off from the world factory work as well. But every now and then you like to get out there. You just like to get out there. Which I hope to do in the near future a lot more. But one of the floor managers, I remember we had a chat function. So social media. And customers were able to contact us via that chat. The thing was, you would have three clients at the same time. Now, at a certain point, I figured out most clients ask the same question. So I had an answer sheet. The only thing I had to do in that chat was control C, control V. I just had all the answers already. Just select, paste, select, paste. So at the end of the road, I turned out to be the fastest social media guy they had. And at a certain point, they upped the clients from three at a time to eight. Now, because I had that cheat sheet, I was perfectly able to do that. But then I went to my floor manager and I was like, okay, let's be serious. Do I get paid more if I um, take care of eight? customers instead of three at a time do i get paid more he's like no and then one co-worker absolute white knight said to me well girl x does eight at a time and you don't hear her asking for a raise raise i look at him i'm like and there's your explanation for the gender pay gap because they don't negotiate so i look at my my uh, floor manager again, is that a yes or a no? And he just starts laughing and he looks at me. I can't pay you more. I'm like, well, then I'm not treating more customers at the same time. Thank you very much. And then, of course, the white knight goes, oh, you're such a dick. I'm like, no, I'm smart. Fuck off. I mean, be careful with these guys, man. It's like, oh, well, they don't, they don't negotiate, so neither should you. You should. Just because somebody else doesn't have the balls doesn't mean you shouldn't have them. Negotiate to your heart's desire. Then at a certain point, my uh, floor manager find out, found out I had that cheat sheet. He's like, you're giving all of our customers the same question. I'm like, yeah. Or uh, the same answer. I'm like, yeah. Correct. Because they're asking, all of me are asking the are asking me the same question. He's like, couldn't you personalize that a bit? I'm like, why? Well, you completely automated your work. I'm like, whose fault is it that I'm the one who figured out a fast way to reduce time spent on our customers? Is that my fault? Or is it a lack of creativity on other people's side that is to blame for that? And he, he... He couldn't fault me for that. I'm like, yeah, sorry. I mean, you're not going to scold me for me figuring out a way to make my life easier while the others aren't. That's not my problem. At a certain point, you just do do not care, in all honesty, especially with entry-level jobs. At a certain point, you just don't care. And when people are trying to fix your stuff, you just go, no, no, I'm doing it my way, and we are not changing anything. We are not changing anything at all. But oh well, what are your jobs? Uh, what are what were moments in your career when you found out, hey, I can get away with a lot more than I thought? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear. Really uh, interested to hear. Good morning, Green Leader. How are you doing? Hmm. I did some call center for a mobile phone company. I hated it. I can't imagine. But were you outbound or inbound? We were inbound. So people called us, which 
was a lot easier. I did a, a short period of outbound, but oh my God, no. Oh, that was horrible. That was absolutely atrocious. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemies. If nobody asks, contacts you, you're doing okay. Correct, Chico. Correct. Hello, Marty. Good to see you. How nice of you to pop in at the greatest coach of the spheres chat. <laughs> Inbound mobile data support. Oh, God. That sounds horrible. Oh, shit. Marty's here. End the stream. End it now. Green light. I actually like my job. Well, that's good. I'm not saying, hey, you're, I love my job as well, in all honesty. I love all of my jobs. The narrating, the personal training, I mean, the uh, exercise performance group, sorry, the monthly consultation group, that's it. They're making progress on all sides. Captain Kapow's in there, Governor Megatron is in there, Phil, Riley, Noah Costa, John Watts. They're making progress left and right. That's just amazing to see. I love it. Absolutely do. CNC machinist. Oh, nice. That's pretty dope. Uh, governor, my current job is in a lab where I deal with no one but my management and coworkers. I personally love it after years dealing with customers. Yep. The customers were fine. The management was always awful. Yeah, you tend to see that. Tend to see that a lot. Great and mighty Coach Napier. Oh, don't tell Ryan. Don't tell Ryan. This is going to be the next beef of the sphere. Finally, I found something. <laughs> Finally. Hold on. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. I will take Ryan to his end. Suck it, Ryan. <laughs> I've always thought narrating would be fun to do. Well, I could, I rolled into it completely by accident. John from Modern Life Dating was like, ever thought of narrations? I'm like, no. He's like, well, you have a good voice for it. You should try it out. And then I narrated the introduction for um, gendernomics link in the description link in the description people and I sent it to Carl and I asked Carl can I do narrations for your book mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. This is fine. There. Suck it, Ryan. <laughs> Tweet. <laughs> oh, this is gonna. <laughs> uh, I wish you narrated Rolo's la latest book. Well, I was this close. I was this close to narrating it. I narrated the introduction and the first chapter. And Rolo went with the other guy. Hmm. I mean, you win some, you lose some. That's that's a bit of the problem in the narrating space. And I've encountered this before, where when you have multiple narrators, um, it will happen sooner that another narrator will be chosen than you sit down with the narrator you asked and give them a an example of what you want, so to say. I've had that with Cleric to God bless his soul, but he wanted me to narrate something for him. And he's like, no, no, no I'll go with somebody else because I want it differently. I'm like, then tell me how you want it. But speed and all that has to go fast. I've always been told my voice was well suited for using it somehow like that. I feel like I should find out how to implement that. I mean, why not? Oh, what? There is a website where you can apply as narrator. Where you can apply as narrator and voice acting even. Oh, what's the website? You need to Google that. 
uh, starting narrator. Just Google that and you'll find it, I think. Jiko, uh, well, hold on. Okay, Jiko, I got to work at home, but client visits are part of it, yeah? Which is fine, as I don't have to deal with the end customer, only the dealer. Ooh, that's good. End of the day, there is a stack of parts I made, something to show my part, show my time and effort. Exactly. Exactly. That's always nice to see. Well, look at that. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. We were just talking about you. <laughs> uh, John, would you like to repeat what you just said? I'm going to buy you a new... What's wrong with my camera, Rolo? What's wrong with it? I like my camera. I'm doing this cappy style. Show advanced settings. Here, high definition. 720p. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Hmm? I'll probably ask about that narration site again later if I can remember. I'm generally into that idea. Yeah, I got it from John from Modern Life Dating years ago. But the problem is, since I'm European completely discriminating here but amazon and all the other like worldwide brands of narration don't do the um payment in your in europe so amazon only has a payment method in the states and in uh, great britain england also known as so the options you have with um, the options Troy and I went with was Gumroad. Now, Gumroad isn't always as, well, highly regarded as Amazon. But in all honesty, Gumroad treats their users a lot better. From what I've heard, Amazon takes about a 60% cut, somewhere around that, over 50. I know that for sure. So the remaining 40 can be split between the author and the narrator. But I think it's just utterly like it's outrageous that the platform takes so much from it. It's like, eh, I mean, that's just insane to me. And Gumroad only takes, what, 10%? Not even. Because Gumroad has this system where at a certain point where you sell above a certain amount, they reduce their take, which is pretty awesome. Where it's like, hey, you know what? We earned this amount of money because of you. We're going to give you a discount on the cut we're taking because you're such a well-performing artist or whatever on this platform. And I think that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. So Gumroad gets a lot of flack for nothing, in my humble opinion. But, but, uh, a lot of, Gumroad did um, lower the barrier to entry. Uh, I, I won't name names here, but I have seen some plays on popular titles, especially the 48 Laws, and they sell that on Gumroad, and it's nothing more than a two-page plan two-page pamphlet, and by God, people. They sell it to unbeknowing guys. Unbeknowingly? Guys who don't know better. Thank you. And they just kind of scam them out of it. What was one? 48 Laws of Dating, where it's like, really? Just read The Art of Seduction. Like, done. Or read, here, you want a free archive of almost everything that's ever been written in the sphere here you go uh this one has the search result for uncle vaz but the red archive has everything it has everything you ever needed to read except for rolo's work and i believe Royce isn't on there either so here you know what rational mail mail.com i could <laughs> Now I'm starting to doubt myself. <laughs> Did I write that correctly? <laughs> and hartis.org. Chat oh hartis. Just type this into Google. That's all you need. And it's all free. It's all there. Oh, but Rolo sells his book. 
Rolo's first book is for free under the year one tab on his website. So it's kind of like his first book is kind of like a Patreon thing where it's like, hey, if you want to support the writer, you can buy my free blogs in a book form. Oh, no, he's such a scammer. (laughs) But we've had this debate before where it's like, ah, people. I need to write the 48 Laws of Minecraft. Yes, you do, because I still haven't figured everything out. Like, I see Ryan's base, and I'm like, he can farm diamonds? How does he do that? How much time do I have left? I have a half an hour left. No honesty. I don't need to go yet, and I'm bothering Rolo with my camera quality, so that's a good thing. Let's see. Hmm... I'm looking for a short one. Uh, Every encounter is an opportunity. Think horizontally, not vertically. You know what? Let's do this one. Think horizontally, not vertically. I'm going to finish Rational Mail book one today, if time allows it. Nice. A law one, don't swim in lava. (laughs) Oh, by the way, if you were wondering who wrote Lava in the Beach, just saying. Just saying. (laughs) Should have gone with Jack. The people have spoken. (laughs) He's going to hate me for this. Thanks, John. Thanks to you. I'll never narrate a book again. Mind you, he is the godfather, you know. Look how they massacred my boy. I've never seen the godfather. Oh, I know. Think horizontally, not vertically by Uncle Vaja. Okay. Last one. Uncle Vaja here with your Thursday reminder. Ironic. Think horizontally, not vertically. This is especially true for noobs. Recovering nice guys and guys exiting monk mode. You should be doing multiple approaches and engaging multiple women, i.e. thinking horizontally. If a girl is into you, great. If she's not responsive after a reasonable amount of time or interaction, then move on. Any further investment is wasted. It gets you nowhere and can create a sense of entitlement that we sometimes see among Nice guys who keep investing and investing in the same girl, i.e. thinking vertically, who likes him as a friend, but nothing more. Eventually, he will win the right to become her orbiter-in-chief, which makes him the mayor of her friend zone. If you start getting that from girls, then withdraw your attention and move on. The problem we see with nice guys is they build up some blue pill rom-com fantasy in their heads and think that if they just stick around long enough and put the work in, eventually the objects of their love (laughs) will each give him (laughs) wav, marriage, give him that tenth stamp on his nice guy card. And then, according to the rules of the Hottie Union, she will finally be able to give him all the sex he deserves. Don't be a nice guy. Life doesn't work that way. Whilst the nice guy is busy with his boyfriend audition, the chick is off fucking some outlaw biker or escaped mental patient. The difference is that those dudes make their intentions clear. If you're waiting for her to realize that the two of you are perfect together, forget it. And this is my favorite quote from Uncle Vaz. Fun fact, faint heart never fucked fair lady. And he's right about that. Like I said, with uh, at your job, be a bit more blunt. Be a bit more blunt where asking for forgiveness is better than asking for permission. There is another Uncle Vaz post where he openly compliments a girl 
like this, where it's like, I don't know what you're doing at the gym, but keep doing it because damn girl, it's working. And that might sound a bit forward, but depending on how you bring it, like how you bring it is way more important than what you say. Like if I tell you some of the things I said in a normal robotic manner, you're going to think, really, that works? But it's that shit-eating grin and no, hmm, what's it called, outcome independence thing. Where it's like, yeah, you're probably going to be pissed off at what I say anyway, so who cares kind of thing. Have fun with it. Play with her and play with her is how that works. Um, if you're not getting buy signals or IOIs, indicators of interest or whatever, and those do not lead to you closing the deal, i.e. PIV, P-I-V, um, don't know, then it's time to bail. It doesn't matter why. If she gives you, if she gives you, let's just be friends, you already have enough friends. This is the thing. The friend zone is self-inflicting. And I've been saying this for a couple of years now. If you are in the friend zone, you. If you are in the friend zone, it's your own bloody fault. Because you agree with it. You let yourself be in there. It's actually like, how do I get out of the friend zone? You leave. You make your intentions known. And if they are not reciprocated, you leave. And that's it. I mean, it's not that hard, you know. Oh, but I have feelings for her. No, you're lying. You're just lying. Oh, I care for her. No, you want to get your dick wet. Be honest about that. And if she doesn't reciprocate, move on. Next. And th that is not to, like, be degrading or anything towards the opposite sex. But it's just, like, be honest towards them. Because the only reason you're around is because you're romantically interested in them. Would you feel more comfortable lying to them? I mean, I don't think they enjoy it that much either when they found out a good friend is actually, um, well, waiting. Uh, sneaky fucker game is what Gat Sad called it, I believe. Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. she is really saying she wants you to orbit her validate her pay her way and not have sex with her maybe she's involved with another dude fine there are lots of women who aren't maybe she wants to ride the carousel for the next 10 years until the journey ends and the announcer bellows wall station everybody off hey if she wants to train to be an emotional, broken, future cat colonist, <laughs> that's not your problem. Mosey on down the road. Bottom line, and here it is. A woman doesn't owe you anything, doesn't owe you her body, but you don't owe her your time, attention, or resources. Gold digging, friend zone, simping is self-afflicted. That is all self-inflicted. Nobody forces you to do anything. Uh, if you're not getting what you want, it's time to bail. Now go forth and slay. It's also one of a good quote from him. Uh, da, 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 da. I admit I'm guilty of this for so long, Governor says, even knowing how bad it looks. I mean, we've all been there. We have all been there. When I was younger, I had a couple of girls I did that too. There was one, and this was so weird. I told you the story before of Adler and her rock star boyfriend. She kept coming after me, and I'm like, okay, she wants to be friends or something. I was so ignorant. And then one of my friends got dumped. He found Corey Wayne. Corey said, women who are into you, um, put themselves into your orbit or something like that. And I'm like, oh, wait, if that's true, then she must like me. So I asked her, when are you free? And she gives me her monthly schedule. I'm like, oh, yeah, now I get the hint. 
But then she wanted to go back to just friends, and I had to say no. Even though, like, I had known her for years. That wasn't easy or anything, but it was true to my intentions, where it's like, no, you can't, like, go from, I don't know, how long was that? couple of months of banging to all of a sudden where it's like, oh, no, I don't want to do that anymore, but I do want to hang around you, where it's like, no, we're not doing that. I'm so good at giving advice, but bad at following my own. I am every now and then I am that too. I mean, I fall for that every now and then as well. Double text thing or whatever. I just hate it. I like internally hate being left on red. Where as of recently, when I'm left on red, it's done. It's like moving on. Oh, but what if she's busy? No, 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 no. If she's busy, she wouldn't have read it. Let's be honest about here. The medium is the message, people. The medium is the message. I don't care what excuse you make. Medium is the message. If you have time to read it, you have time to reply. Very simple. If she tells you, let's just be friends, you're not in the friends if you just walk away completely. Bingo, and it's that easy. That's it. Uh, this is the exact message I needed to hear so much this week. Well, glad I could help, Governor. Glad I could help. Hmm. Like I said, there's gold in the Red Archive. There's absolute gold in there. By the way, should we uh, look for cameras that Rolo's going to buy me? <laughs> I think it's funny, actually. <laughs> hmm. Why Why does he want to buy me a new camera? Hmm. Hmm. I don't owe you anything, Tomasi. Just be clear. <laughs> hmm. Check up on Ryan real quick. Did he respond? Oh, he will come down at me with fire and fury. I'll tell you. Oh my God, he's going to burn my Minecraft base. Oh shit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I destroyed my own Minecraft. <laughs> Oh, this is not going to end well, is it? Hmm. I've started leaving this chick on red after getting the let's just be friends rejection. Now she tries to set up meetings with me. Ta-da! Now she's entering into your frame. There we go. I think because she wants to see if you can... Okay. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I would do. So let's say, because that, that one girl did that with me as well. She started texting me. I'm like, when are you coming over? She's like, I'm not coming over because you don't want to be just friends. Like, the, why are you texting me? Well, because I miss you. I'm like, well, I miss you too, but not in that way. So either, so let me know when you change your mind. She texts me, when can I come over? I'm like, well, then and then. But you're not coming over as just friends. And then all of a sudden she backed out of it. Now, should I have said it? I don't know. I was just very clear about it. I was like, no, if you're going to come over, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, not A, B, and C. And then she backed out of it. And then she, at a certain point, she left me alone. But you, you got to be, uh, well, you got to be strict with that. What's happening here? Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Marty, <laughs> according to Ryan, I can keep you. <laughs> Sorry, according to Ryan, Marty, I can keep you. I want, I want Dante. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. Okay. But yeah, with the whole friend zone thing, just be... Is that a maintained frame issue? It could be. It could be. Um, just don't yield. Just don't yield. I mean, you want to be more than friends. Then be honest about that. It's like, yeah, sure, I want to meet up with you, but... uh. 
I'm not holding back on making a move. Early frame announcement, whatever you want to call that. Oh, bah, 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 bah. It's like, yeah. Or don't say it. I mean, um, you've made your will known. She still wants to meet up with you. When you start meeting up, I mean, why not go straight away for a kiss? That's what I used to do. And if she rejects, okay, this is not my thing. Bye. And that is, that's not a, like, oh, hold these women accountable thing. It's more like, well, she. this is an indicator, indicator of her still not wanting what you want, but just wanting your time and things like that. That's not what you want. So go for what you want in a normal, friendly manner, sort of say. I mean, I'm not advocating for anything here. Maybe it's a European thing. But if she's not willing to do that, then just leave. I mean, why would you want to be with somebody who doesn't want you as much as you want them? It's that easy. You know, it's that easy. And that's where all of that stems from. Not because 304s ain't shit and things like that. It's not because of that. It's an indicator of enthusiasm. That's where that stemmed from. Do you want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you? Well, I wouldn't. So leave. That's what I said with the whole texting thing. If she leaves you on red, it's done. That is, I have a zero, zero tolerance policy on that these days. It's just like, no, 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 no. Medium is the message. Bye. Next. Like I said, ne nexting left and right. Now, in all honesty, the successes of late isn't great. But at least I'm not hung up on mediocrity, so to say. Because I've experienced that, well, texting within two seconds. Like I said, ice cream girl, things like that. Uh, the former main plate, she would crawl through glass to keep me happy, figuratively speaking. But after that, if you're dealing with lukewarm, it's just, no, you don't want that. The standard has been set. Anything underneath that is gone. The problem is 80% is probably going to be in that lukewarm area. And some people would say, oh, you just have to build report. Nope, not doing that. I am not a fan of last minute resistance, LMR, or anti-slut defense, as it's called, because that will not be an issue when she's into you. Why would you want somebody... Okay, some would say it's playing the game, but there's a difference between those two, by the way. There's a... But... No. If I have to convince somebody of wanting to be with me, then she doesn't want to be with me. It's that easy. It really is that easy. Genuine desire cannot be negotiated. I got that from... What's his name? Rolex Tomaso. Well, yesterday, somebody had a good one. Brolo, no, Swolo Bromasi. Swolo Bromasi. I thought that one was fun. I mean, I immediately started thinking about a Photoshop version of Rolo with like giant gains. I believe that was John Watts who said that. Not sure anymore. Uh, I have to go in a bit. Reestablished frame? Yeah, it could be like that. I feel like I may have lost frame a lot. We began with meeting up. I'd tell her where to meet, not ask. She would follow up and uh, she's seen me every weekend now. Okay, well, go for it. I think I weak up myself a little. I need to stick with what I want. Bingo. And let her know what I want. No negotiation. Well, when the time is right for you to make known what you want. Because you can't just out of the blue text her like, listen here. It's like, it doesn't work like that. Genuine desire cannot be negotiated, right? Yep, correct. If she's buying you stuff, doesn't that mean that she wants to do go for you? I wait. If she's buying you stuff, doesn't that mean that she wants to do good for you, i.e. in your frame? Well, exactly. She buys you shit. I, I saw you like chocolate, so I bought you free bars. Three bars, not three, three. 
It's like, yeah, those are the small things. Uh, that's what I'm confused. She wants to see me, planned months of things to do. She's met my parents and wants me to meet hers. But she just wants to be friends. Then leave! Leave! It's like, no, that's not what I want. Using the friend zone for pre-selection can work. Uh -uh. If there's anything I can think of, she's alpha widowed at worst. Governor, leave. As soon as she brings that shit up again, it's like, I just want to be friends. Bye. Because why waste time with somebody who doesn't want to be with you? I don't get that. Really don't. Now, I get it. You're emotionally invested. Things like that. It's going to hurt. Probably is. But it's better for both of you in the long run if you make clear what you want, act on what you want, and, well, disengage if the feeling is not mutual. We're talking about mutual here. It's not forcing or anything or manipulation. It's just it is not being reciprocated and time is better spent elsewhere. On that note, a shout out to all the members. Slap, uh, sorry. <sighs> Curve much. Captain Kapow, Jean Simone, Peter from Austria, Ian S. Schreit, Mish, Governor Megatron, Riley, Phil Henry, Paul Yulin Spiegel, Chris is Black, Ryan Chung, JD, Horden, Chico, John Watts, Swerve, Cal Marlin, Alex Dante, Tempest, Alex, Moff, Andrew S., Alpha Sloth, Chad Elkins, MPC, Competent Man, Greenlight, Derek L., Andy Lee, Ethan Savilla, The Goddamn Bacon, Timius Maximus, Suleiman the Magnificent, Atham, Will, Red Crusader, Judd Grover, and Nonstop Dre. Did I mention Mish? Mish is in here, right? Isn't he? No, you know what? Mish. Chad of Arabia. Bringer of, bringer of infidels. We message here and there, but I consider what Ryan said at one point. Messaging should be for logistics and... <laughs> I like it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> John. I mean... This is just... There is no bad blood or anything, you know. I mean, just saying. There is none. I was I was actually humbled by the opportunity of doing it. But again, my voice has a specific sound. I did laugh a bit when Cappy came out with that video, though. I mean, but again, that is not up to me. That is not up to you. It is up to the author. So <laughs> to me, this was all just a joke. And fun and laughter, you know? I mean, I don't resent anything, so don't worry about that. Green light, T-Rex, nice. Exactly. She says her biggest fear is getting ghosted. It will happen if she does it again this weekend. Good on you. Um, hit the like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below your thoughts of this show. Let me know um, what your moment was at your job of being like, you know what, F this shit, I'm out. And if you want to become a member, click the join button, weekly Q&As. The Q&A post is up. So please leave your question there and I will see you tomorrow night for Red Evening. So yeah, see you guys then. Cheers. Oh, not leave the studio. <laughs> Hit the like.